I went up to the director afterwards. I said, hey, did you get that on film? I said, tell me you got it. He said, no. Nah. He said, you were just out of frame. But it was a heck of a show, though, man. I thought you were going to get killed. One time I was working on this little independent film and I was doing several different things which you do in independent film you have to do more than one job and I was stunt doubling in one shot where I had to, one scene where I had to ride down this old western town and didn't see my face but the other part was I was uh, wrangling this pack horse for a shot where this prospector had to lead a pack horse up Main Street and go through about 30 extras and then come into the camera range which is called you know coming into your shot and uh, he had to walk up and come into the shot in a frame and I was down there around the corner of the street it was a two street film town it looked like an old western town but there were two two streets and so I was down at the end of the junction I was getting this guy ready and the director had asked me to take this these panniers are on the side of the pack horse and just fill them up. It was supposed to look almost comical. It was supposed to look like a stereotypical uh, pack horse with all the washboards and hands and picks and shovels all just sticking out from the sides of it. So, I, you know, it looked like a stereotypical shot. Well, this guy that was supposed to lead the pack horse was dressed up as a prospector and he's a pretty good actor. If you ever watch a History Channel, you've seen him on there portraying some Western characters, but he hadn't been around horses that much. And he was standing there and he'd wrap that lead rope around his hand pretty tight, you know, and all of it. I could just see a wreck coming. So the first thing I told him was, just go ahead and just let it hang in your hand or one big coil, but don't wrap it around you. Like, okay, okay. Well, this guy that brought the pack horse had brought a whole trail load of horses for everybody that day. And his daughter was there just out of, uh, a little further away and I was dressed in period cowboy clothes and and you do that so that if if the camera happens to stray or you happen to wander in a frame you don't look out of place in the in the scene but I was far enough away it shouldn't happen so I was talking to his daughter who was behind me and I said this is a really nice horse I said have you done a lot of packing on him he's sure you know he's sure quiet she said oh no he's a two-year-old he's never had a pack saddle on him before well I said to the guy, she back, she left and he was there and he's just standing there, you know, getting, waiting for his turn to, for the action and then he had to start leading the horse. I said, look, I don't know what's going to happen, but if I tell you to get out of the way, you just run, okay? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Well, the director calls action and he starts leading the horse up the scene. All the extras are crisscrossing and he hasn't really gotten up to where the main part of the scene is yet. And this pick just... And I'll tell you, the panniers are filled with styrofoam. This is Hollywood magic to make it look like they're really full. There's a big block of styrofoam in these canvas panniers. And this pick was on top of that styrofoam, and it just went... Yeah. And landed on top of that horse's butt. And that horse looked like an Ace Reed. Picture of a, a bronc. The old eyes went about this wide, like, you know, big plates. And it's just quiet. I said, run. <laughs> He started walking away, and I, I tried to take the lead and grab it and pull it around, and this horse just went, <coughs> and put her, he put his head down, he went to bucking, and just saw this, you know, everything you can imagine in a, in a prospecting movie. It started going all over the place. The washboard was slapping him on the neck, and the picks and shovels and pans were just flying out everywhere and landing in the street. Well, he turned around and he started coming at me, bucking, and I was sort of at an angle to him because I had the lead rope. I let go of the lead rope and I just took off running and I was running a zigzag. And he must have thought I still had him. So he's following me right behind me. I can go, and he's stepping on my spur rails on the backs of my boots. And then every other step he's hitting the spur rails and going ding, ding, and I'm trying to zigzag around. Well, finally, I didn't have any place to go. And this was a sturdy movie town. It wasn't fake false front of buildings. These were real serious buildings with real hitching posts out in front and I didn't have anywhere to go there's huge hitching rail out front and a building behind it so I was just running and he's right behind me I could hear him and he's, my spur rail's going zing zing as he's stepping on him and I hit that thing on my chest and and he just must have seen the building veered off and shoved me into that hitching post 
and that thing was solid, but it gave just enough. And I thought, just as I got there, this is going to hurt. I'm going to break my ribs. I have my arms like this. I hit that thing really hard, and he just went around the hitching post and hit the wall of the of this building. And then went around the corner and went down the other street, bucking until he bucked everything out of the panniers. So the director called cut, and we went back around the corner to find what was left of the all the pack gear. And it's strewn all over the place. There's all kinds of stuff. It looks like the treasure of uh, Sierra Madre all over the side of this town. So we started picking up pieces and that. And I got the horse, and he quieted down, and I started lunging him. It was a real long rope. I just started lunging him, and we got him pretty quiet. And we just stuck a couple little things in so they'd be sticking out, you know, so it looked like the real deal. And uh, this guy, when I gave him to him again, I said, be really careful and just, you know, walk slow. And, it, you know, the horses, they quieted down. They started the scene up again. This, we had about 15 minutes to work with him to get him quieted down. So that time worked. Uh, he led that horse up through all those people, walking every which way, and all the ladies in the hoop skirts and everything, and he was fine. But uh, I just, you know, I always felt myself really fortunate. I didn't have a scratch on me. But I just wanted that shot so bad for my blooper role. I went up to the director afterwards. And I said, hey, did you get that on film? I said, tell me you got it. He said, no, he said, you were just out of frame. But it was a heck of a show, though, man. I thought you were going to get killed. So there's a moral in that story somewhere about having the right horse prepared for the right event. So I'm sure there's something you can find in there that's worthwhile. We hope that you've enjoyed today's horse stories here on GHN. We would like to thank this month's sponsor, the Mustang Heritage Foundation. Be sure to check them out. They're doing great things for the Mustangs. If you like what we're doing, be sure to press the like button. If you have something to say about what we're doing, be sure to go to the comment section below. Hit that bell if you want to be notified anytime we have new content. And of course, as always, please subscribe to GHN.